Welcome back to Blake's Den. This is my Ford 3000 tractor and today we're going to have a bit of a play with the electrics on it. So in the previous video I did on this tractor uh, I had charging issues. Um, I thought I'd solved it, but I haven't solved it. Yeah, the battery's definitely not charging. So I'm going to do a whole load of tests on it to see why that is and what the problem is. Um, I don't really want to load up the parts cannon and just throw a load of new parts at it. I want to find out exactly what the problem is first. Now, a couple of things I have done since the last video. I fitted a battery. This is the biggest battery I could find which would fit. Uh, not exactly the cheapest, but it should do the job. Ignore the spare regulator, that was just me doing some testing earlier in the week. And I've also replaced the front wheel, which went completely flat, with one which isn't quite so flat. That one has a slow puncture, but it looks a bit better than the previous one, which is, yeah, a bit past its best. So I found a really good set of instructions from Anglo AgriParts online for testing the Dynamo system, the generator system. So I'll put a link below as to where they're from. But I'm going to slowly work through these, um, each test. I think there's 10 tests, I think, and um, see what happens. Um, but that means we need to do a cold start on this. It's about four or five degrees today. and. We'll see how well it starts. The instruction manuals does say that when you're doing a cold start, it may crank for up to 45 seconds. So wish me luck. It's going for the cold start. We've got the stop in. We're in neutral. Ignition on. Uh, a little bit of throttle. Full throttle about halfway. Do some cranking. Give the starter a rest. There's smoke coming out of the exhaust, which is a good sign. It's gonna go soon. Obviously there's no glow plugs on this, so it's gotta heat itself up. And there we are, it's alive. Now see why I need such a big battery. Test one, positive on the D, on the dynamo, negative going to work, and we should have some voltage rise when I rev it. So it turns out I didn't have to print out all of those instructions, I kind of failed at step one. So step one being um, basically what happens if you've got the D connected to the voltmeter and then earth to the negative of the meter. So I had C, voltage rising with increasing engine speed when well above takeover. This indicates an internal short between the D and F terminals. So it should be putting out two to four volts at engine speed and at normal engine speed and I, I wasn't getting any, even anywhere close to two even with the, the engine sort of flat out so 
I think the next task is to take this dynamo off, take it inside the garage and see what is going on. Looks like it should come off fairly easily. But I mean it's quite old, it's quite tired. I wouldn't be surprised if it's quite corroded. Um, you know the tractor was sitting around unused for well over 10 years so um, yeah that's not surprising at all. Right I'm going to grab some spanners and then we'll take that off. To take this off it looks fairly simple there's a half inch bolt at the top on the adjuster which I've already loosened off and there's looks like there's another half inch bolt down the bottom and then another one down there or nut and bolt so um need two hands to do that so I'll pop them off and then I'll bring you back. We're now back in the relative warmth of the garage you can see what we've got so it's a Lucas Dynamo and it was made in the UK and it's dated the 11th 97 which is November 1997. I'm filming this in November 2023 so that makes it 26 years old. Yeah I'm not surprised it, it's not performing as well. Also as well this is a replacement dynamo because I know it doesn't have a taco drive on the back so that probably means this was replaced in 97 98 and the taco drive hasn't been connected since then so yeah it is what it is um spins okay a bit noisy uh but what i'm going to do i'm going to take this apart um should be two bolts here which hold the whole thing together so rather like um my video i did i'll put the link above for the worn winch um, it's just a motor so you just pull apart so what I'll do I'll make a couple of marks on the casing so now I can line it back up to the same position we'll pull it apart and we'll see what we've got managed to pop the bolts out first one came out fine second one a bit like when I did the winch just snapped that is heavily corroded so we're maybe getting to the source of a problem so now this should with a bit of gentle persuasion separate and I can be able to get it apart you can see it coming now just needs to do a bit of prying to get it to come out evenly. Yeah, there's quite a lot of corrosion in, in here. I can see that straight away. So, yeah, let's see whether this is going to be fixable or not. Right, I'm going to wrestle this off. There we are. Oh, yeah. That's quite bad. One of the brushes is pretty much worn and frozen. The other brush looks free to move. But yeah, our brush should have moved, so that could be part of the problem. And... Ooh, yes. Let me grab a torch and I'll show you that a bit better. I don't know if you can see how bad that is in there. Really badly corroded. I'll keep stripping it down and see what we're left with. Now, several weeks later, and I've done absolutely nothing on this, uh, ended up getting busy, and then I got a cold, which turned into a chest infection, so I haven't been able to get in the garage and do anything. But I have got my hand some new brushes, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean all this up, remove the old brushes, clean up all the contacts, basically rebuild it uh, the best I can. So, let's make a start on that. So I've set this up in my lathe. Uh, I saw Alan Milliard do this on his channel, but if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. So just to help clean up the uh, the contacts on here, so I'm going to fire up the lathe, get a bit of uh, abrasive paper, and then just gently clean those up. So yeah, let's see if I remember how to use this. Look 
looking a bit cleaner, a bit more to do, so try it again. That's looking all right. There's a bit of damage on there and a bit of chipping, but it's definitely uh, a lot, lot cleaner. So, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Right, onwards. If you haven't got a lathe, you can always use a pillar drill or even just a normal little cordless drill. Maybe just put it in a vice or something. But um, yeah, that's one way of doing it. Um, right, I'm going to just use the wire brush again in the drill just to clean up this plate, which is the plate which holds the brushes in place. I've just set the springs back. I don't know if you can see that very well, so they're not in the way and that will allow me to put the brushes in fairly cleanly so uh, where's my other brush gone? oh it's here, under the camera so um, yeah we'll thread that up through here so then each brush has its own little electrical connector and that needs to come round and that screws onto onto there and that one screws round onto here so bit fiddly to do, um, but I shall put them back together now. I think they are a quarter inch bolt and there's just a tiny, tiny little, little screw which holds them in. So I'll bring you back once that's done. I'm ready to assemble this. Um, when I took it apart, one of the bolts completely snapped. It was massively corroded. Instead of using a new bolt, I've just got some M6 studding and I'm going to put that in instead. So I've got it roughly the length I want, plus a bit longer. And then that can just go in. It's a threaded hole in the aluminium base here. So um, as long as I put two nuts on it, it should hold it in place. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put that stud in now. Um, so then I can put the cover on top of it. There we are, so it just winds in a bit. Obviously I don't want it protruding too far out the other end. Right, that'll do. So now we know it works on the trial fit, I'm just going to take it back off again. I need to be able to free off the springs which press the bushes in, so that the, the bushes contact the, the armature. And also as well, I'm just going to dab a tiny bit of grease in here which is just where the end of the shaft runs on. So I reckon I can do this quite easily. Put that on there. Put that on there. Just need to give it a few taps to get it into position. Okay, and then looking from the ends, you can see the um, springs. You might not be able to see them, but I can. I just need to hook them over the brushes. I've got the screw in now and I'm just nipping up the, the stud, which is the replacement bolt. So I've got two nuts on there, holding one to stop the, the stud from turning, whilst the ratchet spanner's on the other one, which is pulling everything nice and tight. So fingers crossed this works. It certainly works. When I did it on the winch motor, so I've got no reason to doubt why it won't work here as well. Okay, that's getting pretty tight now, so what I'll do is we'll wind the other nut in and then just lock that off against the other nut. Consider it done. Right, just need to whiz the pulley back on and then I think we're ready to bench test this. A test I want to do here is I've got it in the vise, I've got the um, positive lead of my multimeter connected up to the D, the negative to earth, that's my multimeter there and I've got my impact wrench. I'm just going to put it on there and spin it over and we should get voltage output. 
There we are, no point seven four volts. So that is behaving as I would expect it to. So I think we might be getting somewhere with this. Another test I wanted to do was a motor test. So negative going to negative on the battery, positive going to positive on the battery, but positive goes to the, the D terminal. And I've got that D terminal shorted out to the F field terminal. Let me uh, reset that. And then as I connect this on here, this should turn like a motor. There we are. So we know that that's working now, which is great. Nice and smooth, nice and quiet. Fast forward a bit and I've got the rebuilt alternator fitted. Just need to put the wiring connectors back on. Um, one thing I forgot to do in the video was fit the fan. But the fan is on and it definitely clears that little bit of studding I've got sticking out. So I'm not confident it's going to work, um, but we'll give it a go. We'll go for another cold start and yeah, see what happens. Now try. There we are, snow. Nearly there. There's a bit more throttle. The battery is charging! So I don't know if you saw that in the video, but as soon as it started up, the ignition light went out to say it was charging. Which is good, and it's staying off. So I'm actually going to leave that video there for now. There's some more jobs I want to do, but I'm going to do that in another video. Um, I want to start using this. I've got quite a few jobs I need to do with it. I've purchased some new 28-inch wheels to go on the rear. Well, not new, new to me. Uh, they came in a clever package deal where I got another front wheel as well, so that's a win. Uh, and yeah, I want to get the front loader on as well and start using it. So, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there for now. So I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, press that like button. Please consider subscribing to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and you'll get notified of all the latest videos. And if you've got any comments or any questions you want to ask, just drop them below. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.